As a lifelong Disney fan, I have ridden every single Disney ride at Walt Disney World. So today we're gonna go through every single one and I'm gonna rank them from worst to best. Hi everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for yet another fun ranking video. Now while I typically do rankings of Disney movies and certain Disney characters on my channel, every so often I do love to break into the Disney parks and talk about all of my favorite experiences within the parks. And so by the title of this video, you know that we are jumping on some of the best Disney rides today. And in writing the script and planning for this video, I definitely thought about potentially splitting this video up into the four different theme parks and giving you guys four different videos. But I thought, where's the fun in that? Let's put all of these Disney rides together in one big video because who doesn't love a huge list of Disney things? So yes, today we are keeping the intro short and sweet because we have a huge list of Disney rides to get through. But if you're new here, hi, my name's Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator and self-proclaimed professional Disney adult. <laughs> I started creating content over on TikTok but have moved on over to YouTube and I have been loving making long form videos for you guys, which I currently have coming out on my channel every single Friday at 5 o'clock. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on any future magic from me. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. And before we jump into today's ranking list, I am going to go through some brief disclaimers and conditions, but if you would like to head right into the ranking video, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost for the disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company. I don't speak for the brand or the company. Just just a lifelong massive fan, so any and all opinions in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney attractions down in my comment section, so I am so excited to hear about all of your favorite Disney rides down in the comments. And thirdly, brief spoiler warning for all of the Disney attractions we are going to be talking about today. As in ranking each of them, I am going to give a brief synopsis and a general overview of each ride, so if you don't want anything spoiled for a specific Disney ride, then you can just jump on up to the next number on the list. Next, moving on to our conditions. Today's list is primarily focused on the rides that reside within each of the four Walt Disney World theme parks. The Walt Disney World Resort is located in Orlando, Florida, so we won't be touching on any attractions other than the ones in the Orlando parks. And because we are staying within the theme parks, we are not going to be including any rides in Disney Springs or either of the two water parks, which means no Typhoon Lagoon and no Blizzard Beach. And so that way we can specifically pinpoint the attractions that are going to be on today's list, I am going to briefly define the word ride for today's list. Again, for the purposes of today's video, a ride is an experience where you sit within a moving optical and experience things around you. That does mean we will not be including any sit-down shows, character meet and greets, or attractions that are solely a walk-through experience. I hope that just gives a little bit clearer of an expectation for which attractions are going to be on today's list. And if you guys want me to do a full ranking of every other attraction in the parks that's not a ride, let me know down in the comments. I am always happy to take suggestions for videos. But with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to jump into today's ranking video. Oh, and as always, I do want to briefly go through the talking points that I'm going to touch on for each individual ride. For each ride that we are going to be talking about today, we are going to touch on which theme park you can find the ride in, a brief description of the ride, meaning what the experience is like, and thirdly, my thoughts on the ride. All right, Who's ready for my definitive ranking of every Disney ride? If you're ready, sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's get into today's ranking list. Now we are starting off today's list in a rather unconventional way. I am starting today's list with three rides that I am excluding on purpose, and I hope you will forgive me for this. <laughs> the first ride that I am excluding from today's list is Test Track for a specific reason. Earlier this year, Test Track was shut down in order to make way for a brand new overhaul of the attraction. While the ride vehicles and track layout is remaining the same and will reopen exactly the same as it was, all of the visuals and surrounding media that is within the ride is going to be completely different. And so I feel like it's going to be way too different of an experience for me to actually talk about a ride and not seem immediately outdated. <laughs> as I am recording this video in September of 2024. And so I hope you'll excuse me excluding this one for today, but if I were to talk about Test Track today, it would be in a way that you and I are never going to experience again, and so I don't really think it's gonna belong on today's list. Now, the other two rides that I am intentionally excluding today are for 
a different reason. <laughs> the other two rides that I am intentionally excluding from today's list are specifically for the reason that I never ride them for the reason of not having a strong enough stomach. I can pretty much do every single ride on Walt Disney property and have absolutely no problem. However, there are two attractions that do mess with my head quite a bit and do unfortunately make me sick. And these two rides, my dear friends, are Mission Space and Rock and Roller Coaster. Now I know, I'm so sorry, I know Rock and Roller Coaster is such a favorite to so many, and I loved the experience when I went on the ride. Did not, however, love the experience when I got off of the ride. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Rock and Roller Coaster is a roller coaster type ride in the dark, which has multiple inversions, which unfortunately this Disney adult is not able to handle. <laughs> and likewise, Mission Space is an intense motion simulator that simulates the feeling of going into space. And I guess when I said I've ridden every Disney attraction at the beginning of this video, I don't really mean every single one, because Mission Space technically has two different lines. There is a green mission and an orange mission. The green mission is a lot easier for the majority of guests to go on. It is significantly less intense, and a lot more people are able to handle that one, as opposed to the orange mission, which is a lot more intense and is very infamous for code V incidents. <laughs> And I have only ridden the green mission. I haven't even gone on the intense side and I still did not come out unscathed. <laughs> so technically I haven't ridden the orange side and I will not be riding the orange side, but I've done the green one. So I still feel like I can talk on the experience. But yes, that being said, these three attractions are going to be excluded from today's list. And the reason why I'm excluding them from today's list and not putting them on the ranking list is that I don't think you should take my opinion when it comes to these rides. I have a very unique experience with these rides where I'm not able to enjoy them fully. And so if you as the viewer love either of those rides, please leave all of your thoughts on them down below. So that way anybody coming to this video can look down in the comments and see other people's experiences who actually might really love either of these attractions. Regardless, I do think they are once in a lifetime experiences and they are truly incredible rides that Disney has put so much love and money into. So to experience it was incredible. However, I did unfortunately come out scathed. So they will not be on the actual ranking list for today's video. But with that being said, we still have 50 rides to rank on today's ranking list, and so it's officially time for the ranking to begin. We are starting off today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 50, which is the Tomorrowland Speedway. Now you can find the Tomorrowland Speedway over in the Magic Kingdom theme park. The Tomorrowland Speedway is a slow moving race car ride which you are able to drive yourself. There is a specific track that you must follow. However, this ride is very much an introductory for young kids into the world of driving. Now as for my personal thoughts, I, I do not have incredibly kind things to say about Tomorrowland Speedway, so Sorry in advance. <laughs> Tomorrowland Speedway is genuinely the one and only attraction within the Magic Kingdom Park that I would not even bat an eye if it was announced that it would be closing tomorrow. In my opinion, the Tomorrowland Speedway takes up a huge footprint within the Magic Kingdom that I think could be filled with so many other cooler attractions. The Tomorrowland Speedway is loud, it is kind of smelly, and honestly, I think it would just be cooler to have some more dark rides in the Magic Kingdom in its place instead. I think even an update where it was to be themed around like a Sugar Rush Racers theme would be really, really cool and would update the attraction to feel more like a Tomorrowland with a Disney IP experience. But yeah, this is a ride that I never go on and honestly, I think its space could be a lot better used. But in all honesty, that's one of the only attractions that makes me feel that way, so that's the meanest I'm going to be to a Disney ride on this list, I promise. <laughs> but next, moving on up to number 49 on my list is the Prince Charming Regal Carousel. Now, Prince Charming's Carousel can be found within Magic Kingdom Park, and it is just a plain old regular carousel, although it does play some very beautiful Disney music and have some gorgeous Disney art around the outside. As for my thoughts? It's very beautiful, it's very cute. I think it's visually stunning to have at the center of Fantasyland, but I also think that your time is a lot better served if you're paying that much to get into the Magic Kingdom, considering that carousels are very common, even at small fairs. And so I honestly hardly ever ride this one. It's not that I dislike it at all, it's a very fun and cute ride, but in all honesty, I'd rather just spend my time doing things I can't do anywhere else. But next we move on up to number 48 on my list, 
which is Star Tours The Adventure Continues. Now Star Tours can be found over in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now Star Tours is a motion simulator ride where you, with other guests, will ride along through a randomized plotline in the Star Wars universe. There is a fun little added element to the ride in which a rebel spy is shown, and they always take a random guest from the current ride vehicle to be the rebel spy. I've only ridden this attraction, I think, a couple times, and I've been the Rebel Spy before, which was honestly really cool. But considering you don't really know which plotline you're gonna get from ride to ride, and you're kind of just being jostled around in a giant metal box, it's definitely not the most impressive attraction on Disney property, especially when two other really great Star Wars rides exist within a five minute walk from it. Next we move on up to number 47 on my list which is the Mad Tea Party. Now the Mad Tea Party, otherwise known as the Teacups, is found within the Magic Kingdom Park. The Mad Tea Party is a spinner type attraction where you board a teacup and are able to spin your own teacup, amongst a whole bunch of other ones occupied by other guests. The Teacups is fun, but spinning too much can make me a little dizzy. And so I just tend not to go on this attraction too often, especially considering there are just a lot of other rides in the Magic Kingdom that I prefer. But I do think this one's a classic and would definitely not be opposed to riding it. Next moving on up to number 46 is the Wildlife Express Train. The Wildlife Express Train can be found within the Animal Kingdom theme park, and it is what it sounds like, just a simple train ride. The Wildlife Express Train is actually used to transport guests from the bigger section of the park all the way up to Rafiki's Planet Watch. Rafiki's Planet Watch is another area of the park that has some really fun experiences that you wouldn't get to do in the main area of the park. As for my thoughts on the ride, I think it is a very great way to transport guests up to Rafiki's Planet Watch, but in very simple terms, it is just a very simple train ride with not a ton to look at. It's very relaxing and very enjoyable, but if I were a guest attending the park, I would definitely not take the train specifically to take the train. If you're wanting to experience things at Rafiki's Planet Watch, then it's definitely worth your time. But unless somebody in your party is very fond of trains, I definitely think this one is a skippable experience, if nothing at Rafiki's Planet Watch really piques your interest. Next, moving on up to number 45 on my list is Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. And yes, this counts as a ride because it is a moving seat. <laughs> Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress can be found over in the Magic Kingdom. And while technically I said no sit-down shows, this one is a sit-down theater show with a rotating seating arrangement. The very center of this attraction has multiple different show scenes, and you as an audience sit on the outside of the center section, and the entire theater rotates around. So I consider it a ride because it's a moving seat. Just bear with me. <laughs> As for my thoughts on the ride, I think it is a quite enjoyable show. That is, if nobody ends up evacuating within the middle of your ride experience. And the reason for this is if somebody in one of the six theaters were to stand up and exit the ride, the entire show scene that you are currently watching will end up playing again. And so there's always a likelihood that you could end up watching the same show scene multiple times. I remember getting stuck in the first show scene for a total of three go-arounds for that ride. And by the end of it, I was like, if I have to hear about those Robins one more time, I don't know. <laughs> so yes, I think it is very cute. It's definitely not one of my favorite attractions in the Magic Kingdom, but it's always a nice stop and rest in the middle of your day. If you happen to need a break from all the excitement that you're having in the Magic Kingdom. But next we move on up to number 44 on my list, which is Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Now again, Buzz Lightyear can be found over in the Magic Kingdom, and Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin is a Omnimover type attraction, which means it is a long line of vehicles that all are lined up one next to the other and they are all slow moving at the exact same time. And as you're going through this Omnimover attraction, there is a little laser blaster in front of you that you can use to point and shoot different targets all around you, which will end up giving you a point score at the very end of the ride. Overall, I think this one is very fun. There is one particular room that is all screens with a lot of flying stars going past you that does kind of give me a little bit of a headache, but overall it's very cute. I also do think it is kind of difficult to hit all of the targets with your laser blaster, considering it's very difficult to measure your own accuracy on this ride. But I do think it's very fun and very enjoyable for anybody who likes Buzz Lightyear or a shooting gallery type ride. Next we move on up to number 43 on my list, which is Triceratops Spin. Now Triceratops Spin is located over in Animal Kingdom Park. However, keep in mind that this one won't 
be lasting for too much longer, as it is announced that the entirety of Dino Land is being revamped. So enjoy your final time with Triceratops Spin. Now, Triceratops Spin is a spinner type attraction, meaning you will be boarding a Triceratops and spinning around a central focus point. And using the little levers that are within the ride vehicle, you can move your Triceratops either up and down or tilt it forwards and backwards. Now, there are four spinner type attractions in the Disney parks. And in my opinion, this one ranks the lowest out of all of them. And this is because it's not specifically modeled after a Disney IP. It's very cute. It's very fun. I definitely don't think it's necessary unless you have younger guests in your party. Next, we move on up to number 42 on my list, which is the Seas with Nemo and Friends. Now, the Seas with Nemo and Friends is located over at Epcot, and it is a Omnimover style attraction, which is very slow moving, but takes you through several scenes from the Disney Pixar movie Finding Nemo. As for my thoughts, I like this attraction. It's quite cute. It's definitely not one of my favorite of the Omnimover style attractions, but I will say out of every single other ride on the Walt Disney property, this one probably has my favorite queue line, as the first room that you enter into in this line is sort of this dark beach vibe. And I honestly think it is just so beautiful and so pretty. I could stand in that room forever. <laughs> but as for the ride, it's very cute. For anybody that loves Finding Nemo, I think you will definitely enjoy this one. Next, moving on up to number 41 on my list, is the Main Street Vehicles. Now, the Main Street Vehicles are found within the Magic Kingdom, and they are a variety of old-style vehicles that will transport you from the very entrance of the Magic Kingdom all the way up to the central hub right in front of the castle. These ride vehicles are not on tracks, and they are being driven by a cast member. And be aware that they are not always out. There are quite often a lot of times where there won't be any ride vehicles at all. This one I definitely consider a magical moment. If you happen to walk into Magic Kingdom, and one of the vehicles is parked outside with not a lot of people, it might be fun to hop on board and take a lovely little ride up Main Street. Very fun, but definitely not a must do for me. But next we move on up to number 40 on my list, which is Kali River Rapids. Now Kali River Rapids is located over an Animal Kingdom theme park, and this one is a rapids water ride. You sit within an elevated inner tube with several other guests and go down a giant river. And of course at multiple points throughout this ride, there are definitely chances that you you could get wet. As for my thoughts on this ride, this one honestly is quite short for the extensive line that this Rapids ride tends to get. I do think this one is quite fun, and if you are a big fan of water rides, then you will probably enjoy this one. But just be aware that it is on the shorter side, with only one really big hill, and obviously it is not always operational within the park, specifically in the colder months. This ride can go down from time to time. But next we move on up to number 39 on my list, which is Alien Swirling Saucers. Now, Alien Swirling Saucers is found over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and this ride can most similarly be compared to the carnival ride, The Whip as you are in a little cart that is getting rolled around in a figure eight, and as your alien goes around the turns, it will often whip your ride vehicle around. This one, upon glance, is honestly deceiving because this one goes pretty fast and you get whipped around a lot. All of that layered with the fun music that they're playing in the pavilion adds for a great experience. Definitely not a must do for me personally. However, I always do have quite a fun time on this ride when I choose to ride it. Next, we move on up to number 38 on my list, which is Journey into Imagination with Figment. Now, Journey into Imagination with Figment can be found in the Epcot theme park, and this ride is also a Omnimover style attraction. This ride takes you through the Five Senses Labs with Figment and Dr. Nigel Channing. You end up going through the Sight, Scent, and Hearing Labs. However, unfortunately, things go awry, and so you are not brought into the Touch and Taste Labs, but you are eventually brought into Figment's house and also his imagination. This one is very wacky, very zany and honestly a one-off attraction within a Disney park, but it's so fun, it's so cute, and I definitely think it is enjoyable by the majority of crowds attending Epcot Park. But next we're moving on up to number 37, and 36, and 35. <laughs> and trust me, in a second you'll know why all three are grouped together. At number 37 is the Magic Carpets of Aladdin, at number 36 is the Astro Orbiter, and at number 35 is Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Now all three of these rides and their experiences are extremely similar because they are all spinner type attractions and they can all be found within the Magic Kingdom Park. The Magic Carpets of Aladdin are over in Adventureland and they are themed to 
the flying carpets of Aladdin. The Astro Orbiter is space themed and is also a spinner type attraction, but this one resides over in Tomorrowland. And finally, Dumbo the Flying Elephants is also a spinner type attraction where you board a Dumbo ride vehicle and spin around looking over Storybook Circus. All three experiences are very similar, however, I rank them in this specific order because Aladdin is honestly the most generic one to me. The Astro Orbiter gives me a slightly elevated experience, being higher off the ground than Aladdin. And Dumbo ranks it the highest out of the three because I think the theming is honestly so cute and so adorable. And there's also a really fun play area inside the queue for this line. That's really great for kids, but also it's very well themed and I would highly recommend taking a look at it if you want to ride this attraction. Next we move on up to number 34 on my list, which is the Barnstormer. Now the Barnstormer is also located within the storybook circus land of the Magic Kingdom. And this one is a kiddie coaster. It is very short, but honestly, really fun. This is definitely your child's first roller coaster. It is so easy and definitely will not scare them, but it will also very much be worth your wait. This one is honestly super, super fun. Next, moving on up to number 33 on my list is the Liberty Square Riverboat. Now, the Liberty Square Riverboat can be found within Liberty Square in the Magic Kingdom, and this ride is a giant moving riverboat that you actually get to stand on as it goes around Tom Sawyer Island. Now, much like Triceratops Spin and Dino Land, this ride will not be available for too much longer as the Magic Kingdom is definitely getting ready for a big overhaul to create its own Cars Land. So definitely ride this attraction while you can. I think it's very beautiful and a very calming experience. However, it is kind of a long experience and if you only have one day in the Magic Kingdom, I would definitely recommend skipping it because there are a lot of other things that I think you'd want to spend your time on instead. Next, moving on up to number 32 on my list, is Living with the Land. Now, Living with the Land can be found over in Epcot Park within the Land Pavilion. Go figure. <laughs> now, Living with the Land is a slow-moving boat ride which takes you through all the different landscapes that you can find around America. And it also gives you an inside look into the greenhouses that Disney uses to grow a lot of the food that is served within the Land Pavilion. This one is very calm, very serene. I very much enjoy this attraction, especially after a long day of walking around Epcot Park. So so if you're intentionally looking for a very relaxing experience, this is it for you. But otherwise, you could technically skip this one. Next, moving on up to number 31 on my list is the Gran Fiesta Tour starring the Three Caballeros. Now the Gran Fiesta Tour can be found over in the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot Park, and it is a slow moving boat ride attraction which takes you through the story of Jose Carioca and Panchito trying to find Donald for their big show. You are brought through some beautiful landscapes in Mexico and end up getting to see the Three Caballeros in concert at the very end. I really like this attraction. I think it's super, super fun, and it honestly never has a long wait time, so it's a win-win for me. Next, moving on up to number 30 on my list is the Walt Disney World Railroad. Now, the Walt Disney World Railroad is actually the perimeter of the Magic Kingdom Park. It has three entrance points, which means you can board the train from three different lands. And this includes Main Street USA, Frontierland, and also Storybook Circus section of Fantasyland. The Walt Disney World Railroad is a very beautiful train ride and has some little hints of pixie dust along the way. I think this one is very fun, very useful for getting around the Magic Kingdom Park, and overall is just a very enjoyable experience. It's just quintessential Disney. Next, we move on up to number 29 on my list, which is the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. Now, the People Mover, for short, is located within Tomorrowland in the Magic Kingdom, and it is also a slow-moving Omnimover attraction that takes you all around Tomorrowland and shows you both indoor and outdoor settings. This one is also a very relaxing attraction and allows you to take a sneak peek into a lot of Disney World's Tomorrowland attractions. And if you happen to notice while going through Tomorrowland that Space Mountain is down, I would definitely recommend hopping on the People Mover as last time we did this, we were able to see Space Mountain with the lights on, and it was one of the coolest videos I have ever taken within the Magic Kingdom Park. The People Mover is always a delight. Highly recommend. Next, moving on up to number 28 on my list, is the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Now, Smuggler's Run can be found within Disney's Hollywood Studios within Star Wars Land, and it is a simulator type attraction where you and five other guests will pilot the Millennium Falcon. And what's really fun is depending on how well you're able to pilot it, the actual exit to the line will change. If you happen to drive it very 
poorly and get battered up quite a bit, then you'll notice a lot of damage around the ship. But if you do a good job, the ship will look pristine. I really like this one, although it's not my favorite of the Star Wars attractions. And if somebody else in my party wants to go on it, I'll go on, but I'm usually not one to go out of my way to make sure I get on this one. Next, moving on up to number 27 on my list, is Slinky Dog Dash. Now, Slinky Dog Dash can be found over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it is a roller coaster type attraction. It's not one of the most intense on Disney property. It's more so a family coaster, and it is honestly quite fun. I very much enjoy Slinky Dog Dash, although I definitely don't think it's a priority for my party personally, because the line is always so long, and there are a lot of other attractions that I find a lot more thrilling. But for families going, this is the perfect family coaster it goes forwards, it goes backwards a little bit, and it has a really cute and fun theme. Next, moving on up to number 26 on my list, which is the Jungle Cruise. Now, the Jungle Cruise is a staple of the Magic Kingdom theme park, and it is a slow-moving boat ride where you board along with a skipper who is a Disney cast member, and as you go through the ride, they get to give you some of the most debatably incredible puns that you've ever heard in your entire life. The Jungle Cruise is honestly just one of those quintessential Disney rides that just feels so Disney. I really love this ride, although I will say, and I'll be completely honest, your entire ride experience really does depend on your skipper and how well they're able to deliver the comedic lines. I have had many incredible experiences on this ride and would definitely recommend it, although I would be lying if I said there wasn't the occasional miss on this ride. But if you're heading to the Magic Kingdom, I definitely think you should do it. Next we move on up to number 25 on my list, the halfway point of today's list which is Toy Story Mania. Now, Toy Story Mania can be found over in Disney's Hollywood Studios, and this one is also a shooting gallery type attraction. You don some lovely 3D glasses and are brought in front of a bunch of screens, and in front of you is a little device that you end up pulling the string on and it will throw a bunch of different objects at some targets. This one is super fun and the ride transitions you in a really fun way where your ride vehicle spins around a little bit. Definitely enjoyable, super fun, and always a fun experience to compete against your family and the other members in your vehicle. Next we move on up to number 24 on my list, which is Spaceship Earth. Now, Spaceship Earth is found at the very entrance of Epcot, and is actually the giant silver geosphere that is the park's icon. Yes, you actually go up inside the geosphere on this ride. Now, Spaceship Earth is a slow-moving omni-mover attraction that takes you through the history of technology. And funnily enough, on your way back, you get to create the future of your own. And when you're prompted to look up at the little photo booth, I always like to make a little fun face. Because when you're creating your future, they use your face and animate you on top of another figure. And it's always so fun to see what horrendous face I end up making. <laughs> Next, moving on up to number 23 on my list, is It's a Small World. Now, It's a Small World, probably one of the most controversial rides in the Magic Kingdom. You either love this ride or you can't get the song out of your head for the rest of the day. So I honestly get it, it's hit or miss. But I love it and that's why it ranks in the top half. Now, Small World is a slow-moving boat ride attraction that takes you across the entire globe, past a bunch of little singing dolls, and sing the iconic song, It's a Small World. I think this one is really fun and super, super cute, and I love all the history that comes with it, especially all of the art that was inspired by Mary Blair. Again, quintessential Disney. You can't think of Disney without thinking It's a Small World. So I definitely recommend riding it, and hopefully the song won't stay in your head for too long. <laughs> Next, moving on up to number 22 on my list, is The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Now, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh can also be found in the Magic Kingdom Park, and this ride is a dark ride style attraction which takes you through the story of Winnie the Pooh. This ride vehicle is super fun and definitely different than any other dark ride attraction, considering it moves in different ways, such as jumping with Tigger and even creating this like boat-like movement in the rain sequence. I love The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I think it is a really fun and cute ride. And it's also fun to point out the special little nod to the ride that it replaced. As in Owl's Treehouse, you can see Owl and Mr. Toad signing over the deed. Next, moving on up to number 21 on my list, is the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Now, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is perhaps the longest line that you might encounter at the Disney parks. Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is found in the Magic Kingdom theme park, and it is a family-style coaster. But it's also mixed with a few show scenes, including the Dwarfs Mine and the Dwarfs Cottage at the very end. What's fun about this coaster is that each of the individual ride vehicles that make up the chain of the coaster do swing back and forth, so it is a very fluidly moving roller coaster. I like this 
this ride quite a bit and am very happy that Snow White has one of the longest lines. However, I wish we did get to see a little bit more of Snow White on her own ride. Next, moving on up to number 20 on my list is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Now, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad can be found within Frontierland in the Magic Kingdom, and Big Thunder Mountain is a roller coaster ride, definitely a step up from every other coaster we've talked about so far, but I would argue it's still kind of a family type coaster, just a little bit bigger of one. Big Thunder Mountain is wonderfully themed and so fun, and I absolutely love this ride. I never hesitate in wanting to go on it. Next, moving on up to number 19 on my list is Peter Pan's Flight. Now, Peter Pan's Flight can also be found in the Magic Kingdom Park, and this is a dark ride style ride that takes you through the plot of Peter Pan. However, in a slightly different ride vehicle, as opposed to riding around on the ground, you are actually suspended from above in one of Peter Pan's pirate ships. This one is just, again, quintessential Disney for me and just an iconic ride. Be aware it is a very short ride with often a very long line. You're gonna get the entire plot of Peter Pan in about two minutes and you might end up waiting over an hour. But regardless, if you're able to snag a lightning lane, I really like this one and I think it is definitely worth visiting Peter Pan and the Darling Children on your next flight to Neverland. Next, moving on up to number 18 on my list, is Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. And for any friends from my channel that also know Mammoth Club, who I absolutely love, we are gonna call this ride Let's Jom, <laughs> which is just the abbreviated Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid, Let's Jom. Now, Little Mermaid can be found over in the Magic Kingdom in Fantasyland, and it is a Omnimover style attraction that takes you through the entire plot of The Little Mermaid. <laughs> One of my favorites, I love this ride. I rank this ride very high specifically because I'm a big Little Mermaid fan. So if you also have a Little Mermaid fan in your party, you're definitely gonna wanna stop over at this attraction considering Ariel's meet and greet is right next door. You can get your entire Little Mermaid fix all in one section of the park. <laughs> next, moving on up to number 17 on my list, is Frozen Ever After. Now, Frozen Ever After can be found in the Norway Pavilion over at Epcot, and this is a boat-style attraction. It's rather slow-moving, but this boat ride takes you up to Elsa's Ice Palace, where she performs Let It Go, and then you get to go down a really small but fun flume-type hill. This one is really fun, great for kids, and is honestly really awesome for anybody that is a Frozen fan. Next, moving on up to number 16 on my list, is Soarin' Around the World. Now, Soarin' Around the World can be found in the Land Pavilion at Epcot, and I would technically categorize this one as a hang gliding simulator attraction. You sit upright in an actual seat, however, your ride vehicle moves up to a giant screen, which simulates different places from around the world. Feeling like you're soaring around the world, no pun intended, is so incredibly beautiful and wonderful, and definitely gets me emotional from time to time. I definitely choke up on this ride. Oh, it is so beautiful. And hopefully you get sat in the center section so that way your Eiffel Tower is not in this shape. <laughs> but next, moving on up to number 15 on my list, we're getting to the really good rides now. At number 15 is Navi River Journey. Now, Navi River Journey can be found over in the land of Pandora at Animal Kingdom Park, and this is a slow-moving boat ride through the beautiful world of Pandora. What this ride probably does better than any other ride is world building. You truly feel like you are in the land of Avatar. It is 360 all the way around you, no matter where you look, you are getting Avatar. It is so beautiful and relaxing and serene, and it has one of the most impressive animatronics of all time, who is the Shaman of Songs, who I actually talked quite a bit about in my Ranking Disney Parks characters, which I will link up above in case you're interested. I love this ride, absolutely love it. It does have a long wait time, but I think it's worth it, for sure. Next, moving on up to number 14 on my list is Space Mountain. Now, Space Mountain can be found over in Magic Kingdom Park in Tomorrowland, and Space Mountain is a roller coaster style ride in the dark. But this one doesn't go upside down, so it makes the list. Sorry again, rock and roller coaster lovers. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but what's so cool about Space Mountain is that you're actually going a lot slower than it feels like. You reach top speeds of 20 to 23 miles per hour on this ride, but it feels so much faster because you're in the dark. And for those who like to ride it twice, there is always the possibility that you could ride both sides as there are two separate tracks with different track layouts. Always a wonderful experience, definitely recommend Space Mountain, it is so fun. But you will never feel glamorous getting in and out of those ride vehicles. Good luck. <laughs> you go through this whole ride and all of a sudden you have to get out and you're like, <laughs> But next, moving on up to number 13 on the list, 
is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Now, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure can be found over in Epcot Park in the France Pavilion. And this ride is a trackless ride, meaning you are in a slow moving ride vehicle, but what's really fun is there's no track, so you don't really know which direction you're ever gonna go in. And this ride takes you through Remy getting ready to prepare dinner for his family. You get caught up in a lot of commotion in the middle of the restaurant, but this one is so fun and definitely enjoyable for families and people of all ages. Next, moving on up to number 12, on the list is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Now, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway can be found over in Disney's Hollywood Studios, in the building that is themed to the Grauman's Chinese Theater. Now, the Runaway Railway is also a trackless dark ride, much like Ratatouille, that takes you through Mickey and Minnie's date. That does go awry. Mickey and Minnie are going on a lovely little picnic. However, we do end up getting lost off of Goofy's train. So the entire ride becomes Mickey and Minnie trying to find us and save us from all of the chaos we're experiencing. But it is always so lovely getting to see them picnic underneath the fireworks at the very end of the ride. Next, moving on up to number 11 on my list is Tron Light Cycle Run. Now, Tron Light Cycle Run is found within the Magic Kingdom in Tomorrowland, and this is a roller coaster type ride in the dark. And while this is technically a shorter attraction, I think it only caps out at like a minute or two, but the reason why this ride ranks higher than any other ride so far is the experience. When you board this ride, you ride this much like you would ride a motorcycle. You're not sitting down, you are more so hunched over and holding onto bars that are in front of you. There is of course always the option to sit as you would on a normal type roller coaster. However, I always find quite an enjoyable experience being hunched over on top of the light cycle. The initial launch sequence is absolutely exhilarating and this one is super fun. I wish it were a little bit longer. That's the only reason why it doesn't reach the top 10. But regardless, I love this ride. But with that, friends, we've reached the top 10 on my list of favorite Walt Disney World rides. Again, leave your favorite ride down below in the comments. I'm so excited to hear all of your favorites and take a guess as to which one you think is going to come out on top. But we are starting off the top 10 at number 10, which is Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Yes, friends, the newest ride within the Magic Kingdom. Well, newest themed ride. <laughs> Tiana's Bayou Adventure is a flume type ride that takes you through an entirely new Princess and the Frog themed plotline. Tiana and her friends are gearing up for a big opening celebration and search the bayou for some brand new musical acts to come perform at her grand opening. We travel with Princess Tiana and Louis through the bayou finding all of these great bands, even getting shrunk down to the size of a frog at one point. <laughs> and after the big flume drop, we get to join in the celebration with Princess Tiana. This ride is so wonderful, so beautiful. The attraction itself was perfectly overlaid. I love the new animatronics. The new storyline is so wonderful. And I highly, highly, highly recommend to anybody who loves not only Princess and the Frog, but also a good thrill ride. That drop is no joke. <laughs> Next, we move on up to number nine on my list which is Dinosaur. Now I know another ride that is unfortunately going to get replaced. However, I'm very excited for what is coming and what is going to take its place. Now Dinosaur can be found within the Animal Kingdom theme park. And this is a fast moving Jeep style ride. It is honestly a little violent in nature as it tends to throw you around quite a bit as you're trying to escape the giant meteor and also the multitude of dinosaurs that are trying to chase you. So I will warn you, this is quite intense for some younger guests, but for anybody that doesn't mind a giant T-Rex coming at your face, this one's for you. <laughs> what I love about this ride for right now is that it is probably still one of the most exciting rides. As I always jump, I always scream, even though I know exactly what is coming. So make sure to ride this one while you can, because pretty soon this one will be replaced with a brand new Indiana Jones type ride. I am hoping it is very much like the one over in California, as that is probably one of my favorite rides over in Disney's California theme parks. Oh, I cannot wait for it to come to Walt Disney World. But yes, I love Dinosaur. Definitely thrilling, definitely a little scary, definitely recommend. Next, moving on up to number eight on my list, which is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Now, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance is the big ticket item over in Disney's Hollywood Studios in Star Wars Land. And this ride is not just a ride. It is an experience from start to finish. Rise of the Resistance is probably a 20 minute experience, which starts with you going through the Rebel base, flying up to the ship of the First Order, and then eventually trying to escape the First Order's clutches. At this point in the story, you do board a trackless ride system, which takes you through the entire ship of the First Order, showing you some really cool experiences. And as you move yourself into one of the escape pods to escape the First Order's ship, 
there is a brief drop sequence at the very end. It is very short, but regardless, I think it is very fun and still safe for a lot of younger guests. This one is a top ticket attraction for many. However, Star Wars isn't my personal favorite thing, but I cannot deny that this is a fabulous attraction. Next, moving on up to number seven on my list, is Expedition Everest, Legend of the Forbidden Mountain. Now, Expedition Everest can be found over in the Animal Kingdom theme park, and this is a big roller coaster ride. This one does it all. It goes forwards, it goes backwards, and it ends up bringing you face to face with the legendary Yeti. This one is thrilling from start to finish. I absolutely love this roller coaster. It can be intense for some younger riders, but I personally love it. And yeah, this is probably the most intense kind of roller coaster I can go on without losing lunch. <laughs> Next, moving on up to number six on my list, one that I love so, so much. At number six is the Kilimanjaro Safaris. I love the safaris. Oh my god, this is such a beautiful ride. The Kilimanjaro Safaris can be found over in the Animal Kingdom theme park. And on this ride, you board a safari truck, which is not connected to a track, but rather piloted by a Disney cast member. As you go through the different environments of the safari, your safari guide will point out a lot of different animals, giving you a lot of different facts about them, and also different ways to help the environment and to reuse, recycle, and reduce, as well as many other ways to help save the environment. Getting to see all of the live animals is so wonderful and unlike any other experience on Disney property. And yeah, it always warms my heart getting to see the absolutely adorable elephants and giraffes and zebras and cheetahs and emus and hippos and... All right, you get the picture. <laughs> With that, we've reached number five on my list. At number five is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Now, the Tower of Terror can be found over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and this is a huge drop sequence ride. Think the little leapfrog rides, however, like, infinitely taller. <laughs> now, what I love about the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror is that it has such a spooky theme around it. You have entered into this old Hollywood hotel, which is clearly abandoned. However, the elevators bring you into the Twilight Zone. Be prepared for some very, very long drops on this ride, as this ride shoots you up, it shoots you down, and faster at the speed of gravity. Literally, because as you're dropping, the ride vehicle pulls you down, so you are moving faster, then gravity can help you fall. This one is for any thrill seeker out there, and I absolutely absolutely love this attraction. Next, moving on up to number four on my list is the Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, Pirates of the Caribbean can be found over at Magic Kingdom theme park, and this is a slow-moving boat dark ride, and it takes you through some of the most iconic Disney scenes ever created by Imagineers, with some little nods to the Pirates of the Caribbean movie franchise in there. Oh, how I love Pirates. It is such a wonderful ride. And again, just one of those rides that is quintessential Disney. You really can't go to the Magic Kingdom without getting on this ride. It is a crime. Yes, I absolutely love it, and it definitely ranks in my top five today. Next, moving on up to number three on my list, who's getting nervous? I definitely am. At number three is Avatar Flight of Passage. Now, Avatar Flight of Passage can also be found in the Land of Pandora over in Animal Kingdom Park. And Avatar Flight of Passage is very similar to Soren in terms of ride experience. However, what's different is the ride vehicles. You board these ride vehicles much like you do Tron Light Cycle Run. You are very much hunched over this ride vehicle and your face is really the first thing that is closest to this giant screen. It is a simulator type ride, however, you are in a different optical than Soren. But regardless, Avatar Flight of Passage takes you through the beautiful land of Pandora. It is breathtaking. It is so unbelievably gorgeous. And this is also one that makes me quite emotional. It is so magical and ugh, I cannot describe this ride enough. You just have to do this ride. Yes, it has long wait times, but let me tell you, this one is absolutely worth your time. Gorgeous from start to finish, and it's actually a longer ride. I think it lasts for up to six to seven minutes. Absolutely beautiful, definitely recommend. Next, moving on up to number two on my list. At number two is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Oh, how I love this ride. It is one of the best experiences you will ever have on Disney property. Now, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind can be found in Epcot Park, and this is technically considered a roller coaster dark ride, considering it comes with a plot that you experience while you're riding a roller coaster. This is a full two minute ride of just pure chaos and pure fun. You are on an actual roller coaster, however, each of the segments that make up the chain of the roller coaster 
will turn from side to side, allowing you to view things on either side. It takes you through the plot of the Guardians of the Galaxy being threatened by this giant... I don't even know what he is, just a giant monster thing. I'm not the biggest Marvel fan, but of this ride, I absolutely love. But this ride is just pure craziness. It is the most incredible and unique experience you will ever have on a roller coaster. And I highly recommend to anyone out there, trust me, ride this at least once in your life. It is unlike anything you will ever do anywhere. But with that, friends, we have reached number one on my list of favorite rides on Walt Disney World property. Have you guessed what it is? Yes, friends, at number one is the Haunted Mansion. Oh my god, how I love this ride. Now, the Haunted Mansion is located in Liberty Square over in the Magic Kingdom, and the Haunted Mansion is a slow-moving omni-mover type ride in the dark. And this ride takes you through the very spooky yet very fun Haunted Mansion. What I love about this ride is that it is unlike any other ride. Every single time you ride this ride, you will notice something different. It is chock full of Disney lore and Disney Imagineer tricks that just mess with your brain. It has some of the most iconic Disney Parks characters such as Madame Leota, Constance Hatchaway, and even the Hatbox Ghost, but it is sure to get you in a spooky mood. And once again, this is absolute quintessential Disney attraction. It is not possible to go through the gates of the Magic Kingdom without riding this ride. And honestly, sometimes, multiple times in a day. <laughs> yes, if you ever happen to see me in the queue for the Haunted Mansion, just know that I am on level 10, absolutely elated, probably will not be happier anywhere else than in the line for the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> but with that, friends, we have ranked every single ride in the Walt Disney World's theme parks. Thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun going through all of the Disney attractions and telling you all about my favorites. If you liked today's video, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. And if you like this video, make sure to stay tuned because the month of October is going to be full of spooky fun. I love Disney, but I am also a huge Halloween fan, so I am in my element for the next month. <laughs> and again, if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's, and you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. Thank you again so much for all of the love and support on these long-form videos. I am so glad you guys have been loving the ranking videos, and believe me when I say there is plenty more magic to come. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'd love to see you back. But with that, friends, stay magical. Enjoy the rest of your week. And until next time, I'll see you all real soon.